Hello everyone and welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Today is Sunday, January 29th of 2023. It is the last Sunday in January, being the last weekend in January. I need to tell you what I've made this month. So this video is all about what I finished in the month of January, what I started, what I'm still working on, um, and plans for next month. So um, grab your cup of tea or coffee. Um, it's afternoon here, so I've switched to tea. I had way too much coffee this morning before going to church and while at church. <laughs> and it's time for tea. Um, but yeah, grab something and sit down and enjoy uh, as I share things that I've been working on. So wrapping up the year 2022 was very satisfying for me. Um, I got a lot done that year. A lot of things happened at work with transitioning from remote to in-person and, you know, many, many projects, um, a vacation in the summer. Um, yeah, a lot. And you know what? It was a great year to wrap up and finish and start a new one. And new beginnings are always great fun. Um, I love the new year, new beginnings. I also love every fall time when it's the start of a new school year. It feels like fresh new beginnings. Um, and I really just enjoy those times. So it was great fun to finish a project that I started in December. So my first finished object, and it's many finished objects, uh, but it's a spinning project. So I spun, here let me show you this first. Oh yes, it's great. Um, so I spun a large ball of jumbo yarn. And I have a couple more in my stash. Let me grab one real quick, really quickly to show you. It looks like this. Um, so I do not fancy working with yarn like this that just looks like roving um, but uh, it was in the clearance bin and I got this a while ago possibly more than a year ago Oops. and um, I bought it with the intention of spinning it and that's what I did so that big ball is 250 grams 10, 10 ounces of fiber <laughs> and I spun it down into fingering weight yarn so it's a two ply I spun the singles in the clockwise direction and right and plied it in the counterclockwise no I spun it <sighs> now I have to... hang on I wrote it down on all these tags I spun the single Z direction, which is clockwise, and I plied them in the S direction, which is counterclockwise. There we go. <laughs> um, and I did do a traditional two ply, so the two plies on two separate bobbins. And so all of this is spun that way. Uh, the colorway is called Rainbow Riot which I think you can see makes sense as a colorway name. And the fiber content is 65% acrylic, 35% polyamide. So it's all very much man-made fibers. There's no wool or cotton or anything like that. It's basically plastic. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, rescue this from the clearance bin and make some use out of it. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, in total, I have, if I remember correctly, I have spun up 1,802 yards. And I'll put the number on the screen 
And in case I'm remembering that number wrong, the correct number is the number on the screen. <laughs> uh, but that is how much has been added to my stash. I have not yet cast on a project with this yarn, even though as soon as I finish plying that last skein, I really wanted to cast on right away. But I wanted to pause and give myself time to work on other things I had going on before starting a new project, because I'm definitely one who will start something new and then that gets put on the back burner for who knows how long. So I wanted to, I want to actually finish stuff. I, I don't want to have languishing projects that, you know, three years later I return to. So um, that's part of my goals and my crafting. So yeah, I'm really happy to have finished the spin. Um, I spun it on my, the tool I used was my, I'm looking around for it. Oh, there it is on the floor. My electric spinning wheel, which is new to me as of December. Uh, my electric eel wheel nano two. <laughs> Uh, so I helped back that project on Kickstarter, and uh, as a part of my backing, I got a spinning wheel, and that was just a delight. So it's my first electric spinning wheel. My first spinning wheel is behind me. Um, this is my Ashford Traditional, and it has a single treadle on it. Uh, so I own now two spinning wheels. <laughs> Um, I have the manual version and I have an electric version and honestly it feels like enough. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my first uh, finished project of the year is a pretty big spin, which I'm very happy about. Okay, I keep getting interrupted because Michael's trying to look up our internet bill in data usage information and apparently since the account is in my name I keep getting <laughs> messages that say here's your code to log in and <sighs> anyway I think we figured it out <laughs> sometimes I wonder why it has to be so complicated to just find out basic information like did you receive my payment? And how much um, how much uh, data do I have left? Um, honestly, I'm new to this whole idea of you only get so much data um, because other places I've lived in the United States, there was no cap. It was just you use internet and you just pay the same monthly fee. Um, but here, there's different price plans based on how much data you want to use. And I don't know if that's a, a Washington thing or if that's just a 2020 thing, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, we are limited on how much we can do. And if we do more, we pay more. <laughs> um, anyway, what I was trying to say is that I have a second finished project this month and that finished project is a pair of socks. So I knit a pair of socks and the yarn is from Premier Yarns Serenity Sock and it's just a purple, solid purple colorway and the heels and toes are in Knit pick stroll in some kind of just really light gray, like super light gray. It almost looks like an off white, but it's like a gray off white, you know. Um, and that's also solid. And the pattern I used is one of my designs. This is my trill socks pattern, and. So you saw on the channel uh, last week, I put up a video about these socks and that's um, because I'm re-knitting some of my patterns 
and giving them an update. So an update to the pattern language, the pattern format, maybe updating pictures, um, but just um, giving them a nice fresh coat of paint, right? <laughs> so I've been um, writing knitting patterns for maybe five years now. It hasn't been that long in the grand scheme of things, uh, but I've tried a lot of different things in that time. And so my patterns don't all have the same format or font or depth of information. And so I'm just wanting to revisit some older patterns and um, update them. So these are my trill socks. And what I did is I, I re-knit the pattern because that's how I follow along. It's kind of like um, reading a math book. <laughs> and I say this because I, I teach math for a living. Um, but when I read a math book, I'm, I'm not just reading it. I'm working out the math example for myself alongside the example in the text. And that's how I understand knitting patterns as well is not just by reading them but by knitting along with it and then I really understand what's going on and so um so that's what I did and I I made a whole video about this so so I won't go on and on uh but I will say the original pattern I had only written for one size and so a part of this update is going to include um, more sizing options so um, that is something that you can look forward to next week <laughs> that pattern will be updated next week so yes I finished this uh, pair of socks and I did weigh I did weigh them and keep track of my yarn I'm trying to be better about that um, socks are one of those things that I've gotten to the point where I can just come in here, pick a ball of yarn and cast on and just go. Uh, and I, I'm forgetting to weigh my yarn first <laughs> and write those things down. So I'm trying to be better about that. Uh, so I will put on the screen because I can't remember. I'll put on the screen how many yards I used for this project because every year I keep track of how many yards are coming into my stash and how many yards are coming out. Um, so I added yardage with my spinning and now I've taken some away with these socks. And so, yeah, I have two finished projects this month and I'm really happy with both of them. Okay, I don't know if this counts as a finished project, but I'm going to count it. <laughs> so this is going to make for three finished projects, but, um, it's a ne it's needle felting. And so... I have these two little, this is hard to show to you at <laughs> this angle, um, there are two little mice, um, I'll just show you one. One of them is in gray and one of them is brown. <laughs> Um, but I've been trying to do some, some something to add to our D and D, um, things for playing games. And Michael asked for rats and I made cute looking mice. <laughs> um, but whatever. <laughs> They served their purpose in our game. So it's it's very small, but I did needle felt a couple more things. So there we go. Now I'm finished with my finished projects. So I do have a continuing project, something I've, uh, I started before. I'm still working on. It's not finished yet. And I have something new that I've started. So... The project I'm still working on that's currently in progress is my um, my crochet cardigan. So I'm following a pattern that is by, 
oh my gosh, is it Premier Yarns? Oh, I need to look it up. Yes, it's a pattern by Premier Yarns. <laughs> um, so it's a granny square type of construction. So you crochet all these squares and they're, they're the same pattern. And then you join them together in a certain schematic <laughs> um, to create a cardigan, right? And I am <sighs> struggling. And I'm struggling because I, I, I am not convinced that what the model is wearing in the picture is what the pattern is telling me to make. I just don't think they're the same thing. So if I show you, um, I'll scoot over, I'll put a picture in of what finished object looks like in the pattern, the photos they supply. And I'm particular, I want to note the neckline. Um, the neckline comes down just straight, right? There's no collar. <laughs> it's, it's flat, which was part of what drew me to this pattern in the first place. But if you look at the schematic, the back of the cardin cardigan is four squares wide, right? And the front is also four squares wide with just these two connected and these two connected and it's open in the middle, right? And so you connect those four squares together, kind of. Kind of. So the pattern tells you to connect these two um, and then leaves these two unconnected, right? So all four will come across the back. The one square on each side will be connected, but not the two in the middle. But they come all the way up to the top. So when I did that, it made a collar opening because the, the top flaps of the squares had to go somewhere. And I don't want a collar. I just, I don't. And when you look at the model, it doesn't look like she has like a V joining here. It just looks all, all joined around the neckline. So, I've tried a few things and the first thing I tried was, well, what if I add an extra column down the middle of the back? So I keep the two front panels two squares wide, but I add an extra square in the middle for the back. So that could just be the, the width of my neck on the back. And so I could make the back five squares wide. And that was perfect for the neckline I wanted. It was perfect, but it was now five squares wide and it was too big for me. <laughs> okay, so I figured out that's the neckline I want. That's basically what I need. And so I thought, all right, let me take out that fifth column because it's too, it's too wide on me and I'll reduce it back down to four, which is just what I need. Um, and instead of creating both the front panels to be two squares wide, I'll make them each just the one square wide and I'll do the rest with edging, right? And I'll just fill it in until I get the width I want. Well, that's a lot of the front of the cardigan not being the pattern. So I thought, no, I really like the two, like I need the two squares in the front to go around my body, right? Um, to go, f it's, it's just around the neck that I don't need them. I'm still not convinced this is, <laughs> this is going to be the final iteration of this, but, um, so here's what I'm trying next. Um, what, what am I looking at here? Okay. So here's, um, let me just put this on real quick. And uh, maybe move the camera so you can see. Um, also in the pattern, 
the sleeve is written to be um, two squares going around but my arm is too wide for two squares so I made it three squares so I did a quick modification which is really easy to do on these side seams to just allow for this third square for the sleeve and now that that feels just perfect um, they're obviously not long enough, but I don't want my sleeve to be this wide down at my wrist. So I'm just going to crochet the rest and, and taper in. Or do a puff sleeve. I don't know. Well, i got to tackle the neckline first, people, because I don't know what is going on here. So let me just um, move this camera so I can tell you what's going on. So here's what I'm trying next. You can see I want the two squares for the front and two squares for the front, right? And so what I've got is this is now two squares wide that's open here. Okay. So what all I've done is removed this top square from the front on both sides. And you'll see at the back here, So there's part of me that's like, okay, now that I've figured out the sleeves, maybe I should put these two squares back and see how the neckline fits. But again, I don't want, I don't want a collar, right? So my thought is that I can take this, this square pattern and I could figure out a way to just crochet like this a half square right and join this up here but as I'm noticing with only this one square to hold it up I'm, I've lost so much structure here like this is really sagging so I'm not sure that a half square on the diagonal is the right choice right but it would give me a pretty nice neckline here so then I was thinking well what if I could figure out how to do this pattern but just have one corner missing right like the whole corner at a right angle and so just be this these three and I put that in here so that way I can have space for my neck here without a collar because the pattern is saying not to attach these two right so this is in no way going to help with this structure here um but if i could have half of this square attached up here right and just not have this corner then i could possibly get the neckline i want <laughs> anyway this is just turning into this huge thing and look how long it is on me and if you look at the pattern picture it's like down by her knees um so it's just not the pattern is not correct it, and by correct, I mean it doesn't match the photo that is provided. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I picked out this pattern bec for a couple of reasons. One, I really liked the photos of the finished object, and I want that. And two, it's free. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and so that was really great. Um, according to Ravelry, uh, no one has made this. There are zero projects for this thing, and I can kind of see why. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm. I've made all the squares. 
I've even made more than what I needed to, excuse me, for my size because I played around with making the back five squares wide instead of four. So I've made uh, more squares than is necessary for the pattern. And I'm basically, I'm just playing around with how to put them together to get what I want. And so that has been the last couple of days actually is just tearing apart my joins, rejoining squares in different places, moving things around. Um, I'm glad I figured out the sleeves because that was one battle and I figured that out and I'm very happy with where they are right now. Um, but the other battle is the neckline and I'm not even going to address the length of the thing until I know I have a neckline I like because if I don't have a neckline I like then basically this project is over. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's where I am. It's not a particularly happy place because I'm frustrated that I couldn't just follow a set of instructions. I'm now having to think about if I were designing this, what would I have done? And it's like I'm knitting someone, I'm crocheting someone else's pattern. And I was hoping to not have to use my designer brain. Uh, but now I am. So uh, that's a thing. It's, I have not given up on it. I am still working on it. And I'm confident that I will be able to solve this problem and get a result that I'm happy with. I'm confident that I can do that. But I'm also willing to throw in the towel if that just doesn't seem feasible with um, you know, the, the size of these squares and the pattern that's on them. Um, but, uh, I don't like to give up. I like to find ways to get the finished result I want. So, uh, I'm going to play around with the three-fourths square, trying to create the same pattern over an L shape. And if I can't do that, then maybe I just try to make three little squares that just aren't this pattern, but three little granny squares to fill that in. I, I don't know. I have options. Um, it's just that they take time. They take thinking, energy, time. Um, and I, I was hoping to have this finished at this point. Uh, but it isn't. It's uh, still in progress and <sighs> yes, I will say another pain point in this is that um, <laughs> originally I thought two uh, one pound balls would be enough for this project and then I read the instructions and to get the amount of yardage I would need three. So I went out and bought a third ball and guess what? I haven't even touched that third ball yet. I'm still in ball number two with plenty of yardage in it. So I have this third ball of yarn that I thought I needed. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, so uh, when this project is eventually finished, Hopefully next month, um, I will share that with you. But until then, I'm I'm trying to make it work. I, I'll find a way. So with the spinning project off of my wheel, the socks finished and a pattern getting updated, um, and those two things coming off of my you know works in progress list. I wanted to start another one and also because this cardigan was kind of a lot for me to work on after long days at work I needed something easier <laughs> and I wouldn't say that weaving is easier because it also requires a lot of thought but I started a weaving project 
and I just started this yesterday. Um, so I have this cotton yarn that I spun up last summer and I have uh, a little over 300 yards and so this is hand spun cotton. I made a video of um, taking this cotton that my mom sent to me off of the plant and um, processing it. So I picked out the seeds and I you know carded it and spun it and I did all of that and now I'm looking to use it and what I really wanted to do was weave it into towels and so that's what I started yesterday uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to hold the loom up and show you so uh, it's gonna be much easier if I take the camera and move it to show you so that's what I'm going to do to show you this project um, but before I do that, I'll let you know that I I had two balls of this yarn that I spun. One of those balls went into warping the loom. The other one is here for weaving across in the weft. I've also incorporated some shades of blue from commercial cotton yarn because I honestly don't have enough yardage of my own hand spun to create a couple of towels. And I find it really nice to have towels with a little bit of patterning on them so they're not just plain white. So I thought it'd be nice to just incorporate some commercial cotton from my stash that I have that I purchase with the intent of putting into towels. Um, and so it's just got a little splash of color to give it some interest. Um, and so let me show you what I have so far. So here's my loom sitting on my table in my craft room and yes you'll notice my warp is not centered and yes it's kind of annoying <laughs> um, but that's because I I ran out of yarn <laughs> um, I thought that the one ball was going to be enough to make this wider it wasn't and so I'm just going with it so it's off center on my loom which was not my intent but again I'm just rolling with the punches um, I am here just at the beginning I've got some waste yarn here and then yeah this is the weave so far so all of this white is my hand spun and you can see that it is not you know exactly perfect <laughs> which is the beauty of hand spun and then there are these shades of blue and they are pretty perfect strands in here but it just gives that little bit of pop of color and so I'm following uh, loosely following a pattern I found online and I'll put a link to it in the description box below um, to do these stripes and so um, yeah I've got a dark blue I've got a medium blue and a light blue and again the hand spun is thick and thin and I just think it looks really cool so I'm very happy with this so far um, I mean, it's not perfectly straight across. Part of it is I'm having tension issues on the end here. Uh, but also it's hand spun. It's a regular yarn. So some places it's thick and thin. So when I beat, it's not exactly straight. But I've, I grabbed a comb from the bathroom and every once in a while I'll come in here and just try to, you know, rearrange some of these threads across here until I'm happy with what it looks like so yeah this was a, a mega pain to warp um, Michael had to help me with clamps and scrap wood from his from the garage and uh, it was just a headache but now that it's once it gets warped it's smooth sailing but it's so much work to just get this started 
and part of the reason is because of the loom itself so the loom I have is a Becca loom B-E-K-A and I got this at it was a flea market it was a flea market um, and it, it came as a throw-in with my spinning wheel <laughs> um, so I originally went um, because the seller had posted this on Facebook that they were selling it at their booth at a flea market and it was four hours away from where I was living and I said, oh my gosh, I want to buy this, you know, and I'm driving four hours and, 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 you know, I'll pay extra to have you hold it for me or whatever is necessary. Um, and she was very kind. She would not take extra money from me. Um, but she said that, but the deal is you can't just take the spinning wheel. You have to take the other things that come with it because I'm having a hard time selling them, honestly. <laughs> um, and so I got the wheel and I got this loom. And I got a warping board, which I no longer have because I left it in Texas. Um, but I got all of that um, as a package deal. Uh, but this loom, I can see why she had trouble selling it. It's not, um, there was masking tape on here and I had to use glue. Um, this is my really bad glue job to fix this in place. Um, I mean, it wasn't functional when I brought it home. Um, it doesn't have any fancy things to it. Um, and so it's just kind of bare bones and difficult for, for me because I'm not an experienced weaver. I will say as one <laughs> quick last minute throw in, I did start another project. <laughs> um... I started another pair of socks. This is as far as I've gotten. Uh, it's just, I'm still in the cuff. And so the yarn is Patton's Croy, which is fabulous sock yarn. Um, and it's Patton's Croy that I got on sale. And this colorway is Magic Stripes. And I <laughs> really wanted to cast this on because um, so Michael and I play D&D, &D, which is Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm playing a character right now that's a wizard, so she's a magic user, <laughs> and this is called Magic Stripes, and we were going to the movie theater to watch The Legend of Vox Machina, which is a D&D &D campaign um, produced by Critical Role, and Michael and I watch Critical Role quite regularly on YouTube. And so anyway, I just, it, it was just too perfect that this was called Magic Stripes and it was about D&D &D and magic users. And anyway, so that's as far as I got is I, I knit that while we were waiting for the, um, it's not a movie, the um, produce episodes. And um, so it's a, a show going to call it a TV show. Do we call them TV shows anymore? Or do we call them series? Or I don't know. Our language is evolving so fast I can't keep up with it. But <laughs> but it's a show and they, they aired the first three episodes in the movie theater. And so we went to go see that and show our support because we're big fans and we enjoy what, um, what they do to... Um, put on their D&D productions. It's a lot of work and I thank them for it. It's <laughs> very entertaining and um, well done with their production team. Um, but yeah, so I did start another pair of socks. Um, I got as far as the ribbing, which means I still haven't decided which pattern I'm using. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I think that is it um, for the month of January. I will say the next episode to go up on the channel will be a feature video. Um, so I'm creating um, feature videos that feature a project. So I take you from start to finish 
uh, through that project. Um, I talk about things that are working well, things that aren't working well, um, my thoughts, how I do things. They are in no way a tutorial. It's just taking you um, along through my journey in process. You'll watch me make mistakes, <laughs> figure out how to fix them, um, and learn and grow as I try new crafts, try new techniques, um, and that kind of thing. So the feature video that will show up next week is about dun, 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 my spinning project. So I'm going to take you start to finish through this spin. And you'll get to see my electric wheel and how I decided to work with this fiber. Um, and so that will go up next week. Excuse me. And then in the middle of the month, I will give you another tour of my garden. So um, at the end of each month, I'm giving you a wrap up of what I've made. In the middle of each month, I will show you what's going on in the garden. So what's growing, what's not growing, um, what the weather is doing, <laughs> and uh, things like that. So that's what you can look forward to in the next few weeks here on the channel. So until I see you next time, I hope you stay safe, you stay well, and you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye, everyone.